What's up guys? Back today here and we're going to talk about something that I've been working on for a while now and if you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't already, you should, at Mad Max Guns, um, I've been posting a lot of, about the whole process of it. Uh, a lot of people seem to be interested about it too, but before we get to it, uh, I got a little announcement. Big Daddy Unlimited decided to come on board and help support the channel. So if you want to help them, help me, check out the link in my uh, description and in my bio on my Instagram. You can subscribe to them and then it helps me out. They uh, will help me get some ammo or whatever. And in the end, it's just a way to support the channel. So if you don't know what Big Daddy Unlimited is, it's like a, a superstore, online superstore, where it's behind a paywall so they can uh, mark, put stuff out from ammo to guns, parts, everything in between uh, out at below map pricing so it's cheaper than everywhere else so if you buy gun parts a lot it's for you if you don't buy gun parts a lot it might not be first month uh, 99 cents after that it goes up to a couple dollars a month but check that out and if you want to support a little more patreon.com slash madmaxguns now that we got that out of the way today we are going to be talking about this guy right here it is a 16 and a half inch 308 semi custom bolt action um, built by me um, if you've been following the channel at all I, this used to be my PRS rifle from last season I ended the season by uh, I started using a, a 6GT that I'm gonna be talking about more later and so this was just laying around and I wanted another 308 that was in a more classic configuration or um, stock is really what made the big difference. So pulled the 6x47 LaPool barrel out, um, went talked to my gunsmith. He gave me a, it used to be a 31 inch straight taper 308 barrel cut in half. So uh, 16 and a half inch, uh, I guess that's. 33 inch barrel but finished length they come down doesn't matter what we had was a straight taper 308 barrel at 16 and a half inches I did the profiling on it as some way to learn how to do it there's tons of articles online I went off for rifleshooter.com who is happy to be my gunsmith and did it in a XM3 um, taper but it's 16 and a half inch instead of 18 and a half inch so it's going to be a little fatter at the muzzle which is good because it mats, meets up perfectly to this hellfire break here if you don't know what an xm3 is it's uh darpa made a uh, short urban sniper rifle uh, there's only like 30 something of them made for the marine corps and they don't even use them anymore but it, it's kind of like a niche thing in the clone groups and i thought the taper was perfect for this and it ended up being perfect for this but we'll go from the front to back on this um, if you've seen my breakdown of my PRS rifle from last season a lot of this is gonna be repetitive but for those who haven't up front here 30 cal uh, area 419 muzzle brake three port the four ports are out and I have one of those on a six millimeter build that I have and they work great too I would suggest the four over the three actually uh, it's sitting in a Graybo Renegade stock, I believe. Um, Graybo is like an offshoot of Macmillan stocks, but they're a little more budget friendly and uh, they're put out on in bigger batches. So you, the quality isn't going to be quite as good as Macmillan, but it does the trick. Uh, barrel, Bart line, um, custom taper, 1 in 10 twist, and it's a 5R barrel. Up front here, we got a Atlas bipod sitting in Area 419 Arca Lock. If you watch my video on garage gunsmithing, I put this Arca Lock rail on the bottom here. It's Area 419. And a lot of people were kind enough to point out that, yes, I did the Tina incorrectly. I paddle built, I did the paddle bit on the bottom instead of going through the top. Uh, I will point out that the Tina in this, the way this worked out, is unnecessary but I did it anyway and fixed it anyway just because it was the right thing to do went through the barrel channel dropped it in tightened it up and we have a properly installed arc lock rail bottom metal is a PTG 
uh, M5 clone, which works ASCS mags. Uh, Action is a Remington 700. It's not blueprinted, which I'm fine with because blueprinting and accurizing in a Remington 700 actually allows for more slop. Uh, just because you're taking material off. Anytime you're taking material off, there's less, the tolerances aren't as tight. But uh, I'm sure it does accurize it, but I don't see the need to, especially on a 16 half inch 308. By the time you're done putting the work into a Remington 700 action now, anyway, you put as much money as it would cost to get a custom action. So take that for what it's worth. Barrel, I mean, bolt, we fluted, uh, did spiral fluting on it. Trigger is a very crisp Timney trigger, single stage, just like two something pounds, very crisp. Um, I'm more of a trigger tech guy myself, but it's what came in this action, so I'm just going with it. And in the back here, we have a foam sleeping mat with 100 mile an hour tape, fasten it on there with some camo wrap on there to soften it up. It has all been painted with Alumahide from Brownells. I'm a big fan. It's like epoxy based paint. It's almost like it becomes like an actual coating, like Cerakote. It's actually much more durable than just rattle canning, which uh, I dig. Now, if you've been following my Instagram, you've seen this with a couple different optics on it. And we've landed on this Mark IV here, which is very classic. It's a three to uh, three and a half to ten. The, it's got a mil TMR reticle and MOA adjustments. Military's been doing that, what well, used to do that in like the 90s to the 2000, mid, mid to early 2000s before they smartened up and went mil mil. But I thought this scope looked very at home on this rifle. So, and it's a six and a half inch barrel. I'm not gonna be shooting that far, so 10 magnifications plenty and uh, I'm told by people that are in the know if you can't hit it on 10 you can't hit it on 25 take that for what's worth not my words just quoting somebody else who's done a lot in this field problem with this optic I shouldn't say problem <clears throat> the the windage is half MOA adjustments which fine uh, if you're going to be MOA adjustments, I'd like to see quarter. The elevation is one MOA adjustments. Each click is one MOA. But this was explained to me as this is a minute of man scope, not a minute of angle scope. And it's meant to hit an area target, not like a point target. So, I mean, I guess it is what it is. But uh, as a BDC in it for 168 grain CR Match Kings which is pretty much the federal, uh, it's military uses them, but it's essentially the federal um, gold medal match, 168s, which out of like a 22-ish in, inch barrel, which this is matted up to, you're getting about 2,650 feet per second. So out of a 16-inch barrel, I had to do hand loads, which I got to match that speed, and that way the BDC and the knobs here match up. Um, it's not a BDC reticle, the actual knob adjustments have one marked out to 10, you're maxed out at a little past a thousand, it's 55 MOA all the way around, but you're, it, you'll, you, for all intents and purposes, you should be able to shoot this at least a thousand yards with that bullet at that speed. Problem with 168 grain CR match kings, they start to peter out around 800 750 mostly the shooting that's going to be done with this is going to be 650 and in every once in a while i might take it out to try to take it out emphasis on try take it out to a thousand there's no reason why i shouldn't be able to hit at a thousand being that with 18 inch 223 i hit a thousand like was be able to somewhat consistently hit a uh, 20 inch plate at a thousand so I'm going to give it the old college try, but this gun is essentially just built as like a gimmick. It looks cool. It does a trick. 
short guns, short bolts guns are like the new thing. I, I was a little ahead of the curve on that accidentally, but it looks like they're more and more people are going towards that direction, uh, especially with the Daniel Defense Delta Five that's coming out. But I did it just because it looks cool and short bolt actions. I don't know. I, I always had a thing for them. Also, I'm told from certain people that shorter barrels have better harmonics, and harmonics play a huge role into accuracy. Um, arguably more of a role than consistency and velocity, because you can have a consistent bullet lo like load and still have a target, like your grouping that's all scattered all over the place. I'm not going to dive too deep into the science of harmonics, but essentially it's, it's a wave that the barrel vibrates at, and there's ways to control it namely the new tuners that are out by Eric Cortina. I'm sure there's other people that make tuners, but Eric Cortina makes the tuner break, which is pretty neat. More prevalent in um, F-Class and bench rest shooting, but you're starting to see them a lot in uh, PRS. You can also control it by bullet seating depth, but if you find your velocity, if you find your charge weight first before you start doing seating depth and you change your seating depth, it's going to change the pressure because of how much more empty space there is between the powder so um, that's a little bit of a side note but this shoots very accurately it's a it's a half inch gun on a good day I typically right motor on three three quarter of an inch gun and that's with factory ammo hand loads it was more consistent around the 0.6 area and but it will shoot uh, farthest I've taken out so far is 615 and it hammers with a pretty decent wind, I was hitting the 8 inch plate at 650 consistently. So, the gun's plenty accurate, um, more accurate than I am. But speed is where you're going to be looking at the problem with the 16.5 inch gun. So, if you're looking into bolt guns and you're thinking maybe I want a 16.5 inch gun, uh, the only question in my eyes is how far do you plan on shooting? What do you plan on shooting with it? A lot of people want it for like uh, like hiking guns, uh, hog hunting, whatever. If you're shooting inside shooting inside of 500 yards, this is plenty of rifle. Um, but I don't want to be stuck with just a 16 and a half inch 308. So pretty soon we're gonna be talking about this guy. This is my not quite an M40A5, not quite a clone build, but. Uh, I just like the way it looked. Uh, we will talk about that one in a couple weeks once I take it out to some distance. As of now, I've only shot at 100 yards with it, just strictly doing load development. But if you got any questions about my uh, Stumpy Thumper here, drop them in the comments below. Make sure you check out Big Daddy Unlimited. Uh, make sure you check out my Instagram, at MadMaxGuns, patreon.com slash MadMaxGuns. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. Thank you for liking and if you didn't like it, as always, eat a dick. We'll see you later. Peace.